Does this defense have any heart? That's no. Tough. They suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? <laughs> in the corner, like, they shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Here we go. They have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan? Uh, Caleb Carter, it's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style. Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work hope everybody's having a great great finally freaking friday as we get ready to end 2023 i can't believe that this year has literally flown by the way it has i can't believe this nfl season has flown by the way it has but it is what it is we are week 17 Next weekend will be the final regular season game of our uh, season, and then we'll get into playoffs. Now, uh, program notes, next Sunday, we don't know if it's going to be a 1 o'clock, a 4 o'clock, or a 8 o'clock kickoff, but we will be at FedEx Field tailgating. Um, I've asked anybody who wants to come join us. Um, there is a post in the community tab that also has a video uh, talking about um, the location, the cost. You can still get tickets if you hurry. They're $199 for a ticket. We're in section 315, club level. Uh, the nice thing about club level is if the weather's bad, there's the indoor concourse. You can watch the game, stay warm, dry, and all that. And there's no pipes over your head to leak. The parking location is the red zone lot. The red zone lot opens up an hour earlier than the other lots. And it has kind of a back way to get in and out of it uh, off of Sheriff Road, which makes it great because you can get in, you know, ha get your game on and get out real easily. Um, the parking passes, the same person, Jed Pilgrim, has the parking passes. They're $50 for those as well there's no extra fees on it and you'll be purchasing him for purchasing him from him directly so that's the news that we have as far as that goes um this week um wow i can't believe it this is the second to last game of the season already um the cowboys going against uh the lions we know that the cowboys have been playing well at home uh, i want to go over our final injury report we have Yoda was limited uh, on Wednesday, but was a full participant on Thursday, which is good news. Um, he had a toe issue. Uh, Rico Daddle did not practice uh, yesterday. Uh, we'll see if he got just to walk through today. Uh, Semi Felco was a full go. Uh, Jonathan ha ha Hankins uh, did not practice. Um, Malik Hooker was full. Hunter Lipke was a full. Tyron Smith was limited. Uh, they say there's a 50-50 chance of Tyron Smith playing as well as Hankins. I would say that it's probably more likely that Tyron Smith plays than it is for Hankins. Um, you know, this is a different world today uh, than it, what it used to be when I grew up in things. Um, social media, you know, I love social media because, hell, I'm on social media. And with social media, there's a lot of incredible things. And a lot of the people that are some of the, my best friends in the world are because of Joe Boo Sports Report and doing the Joe Boo Sports Report. Um, but there's also a lot of negativity, and sometimes you can say things and they will live on forever. You can do things that will live on forever on the Internet because the Internet never, net never forgets. And it's real, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Don't know where that came from. Pardon me. Um, it's real easy to have a slip up on social media that causes problems elsewhere. Micah Parsons, I'm not sure how I feel about Micah Parsons' show. Um, of course, I'm sure Bleacher Report loves it because controversy sells. And Micah Parsons is not one to hold punches. He's going to tell you exactly how he feels and what's going on. And things that he says are factual. There is no if, ands, or buts about that. When he points out that he is not getting calls and being held like crazy, it is a fact. And it is not fair. Unfortunately, 
I don't know that him bringing these things out is helping his cause any. In fact, I think it's doing more damage than good. Um, you know, this was on his podcast yesterday, um, responding to Debo um, and crew in San Francisco. Sometimes it's better not to poke the bear. Purdy played bad, and people were looking at my tweet, um, and they were they had all these opinions. But not once did I talk about Purdy. I talked about the things that was going on in the game, right? And no, I'm not worried about the 49ers. I mean, everyone that I know and probably your moms and your fathers were watching the game on Christmas night too. I'm telling my family watching the game. I'm jotting down my thoughts. Am I worried about the 49ers when I wake up? Absolutely not. I have two children. I'm not worried about the 49ers at all. And that's for Debo and whoever else. I'm talking about the game. That's my fair opinion from my page. I, I don't care what's going over there. They have great players. We have great players. A bunch of players in the league have great players. But I don't think he's bad. I, like I said, you look at the fast action, two, three tip balls, obviously interceptions, the one to Kyle Hamilton. I know he wish he got back, but I don't think he played a bad game. I just acknowledge that there was deficiencies in what a lot of people were not seeing, Right. I said they were down 21. We talked about Purdy being down, um, playing from behind. Can he play from behind? Can he have that MVP moment where he shows us that it's not a scheme and he is that guy? People fail to realize coaching matters, right? And <laughs> I think the 49ers do a great job schematically of, I think Kyle Shanahan is obviously one of the best offensive coordinators, um, coaches in the NFL, right? And they did a great job schematically covering up weaknesses in their team. And I, you look at, and I'm not saying Purdy's a weakness at all before we even get to that, but you look at when they drop back, you've seen guys like Jadavion Clown again after. You've seen when Trent Williams went down. Is there more besides that, right? Schematically, everything's quick. They obviously didn't want to get into the drop back game because what? There was a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things that could come up when you get into that game. The 49ers are a front runner. They can play from behind. They play. They like to play from ahead because obviously their defense is so good. That's all I was saying. There's nothing wrong with the truth. People want to say whatever about the truth. Um, like I said, I think Purdy's still having a great year. I have nothing against Purdy. Um, what people are trying to perceive or whatever take from that message is not about him. It's about scheme. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm going to take you guys back in time okay i am old i am old school and so on back in my day that would be called bulletin board material it doesn't matter here's the thing about the internet it doesn't matter how you try to explain what your thought process is because people are going to cut it up break it down try and infer different ideas and so forth to put you into a negative if they don't like you they can take that whole thing and basically turn it into you're just trashing the 49ers back in my day we didn't have of course computers and internets and stuff so we had a thing called a bulletin board okay it was cork board <clears throat> you had um push pins uh you know thumbtacks that you would put up you know clips from the newspaper and it used to be they would walk by they would read this and say they said what about us and you know would piss off players and get them motivated to play against you everybody is so motivated to play against the dallas cowboys we don't need them to have anything more and i don't know that and, and i'm not going to say that micah parsons needs to be studying more this is a misnomer that people always say that you know they're not focused in listen you got only a few a few practices um a week you can only do so much studying and so forth uh for a game so understand you know that's a misnomer guys have free time and they should have free time to get away from um, football, to get your mind right, to get refocused and so on. But I'm not sure that everything that Micah Parsons is doing is helping him. The NFL does not like to be told what to do or that they are making a mistake. They're not going to go through and correct the wrongs that are happening to you because then people are going to say, well, the Cowboys are getting preferential treatment. If anything, it's kind of like 
when you have your father who is a coach on the team, he has to show that there is no bias for you, that he's making it easy for you. He's going to make it harder for you to show that he is not playing favoritism. And that's exactly what's happening with Micah Parsons, who is the favorite son. He is an MVP, defensive MVP candidate. He is a generational talent. And they can't show that they're playing favoritism to him, especially because he's a Dallas Cowboy. And so the more I think that he ends up bringing it up, the more that he ends up talking about it, I think the worse that it's going to actually be. You've seen almost nine games Nine games. We've all seen the pictures. We see it game after game after game with him being held. And yet he's getting the ticky-tack calls on him. It's just the way it is. And I think the sooner he realizes that him speaking up about it, we all know. It's not that the NFL hasn't heard. I think the better off it'll end up being. But that's just my personal opinion. And I'm an idiot with a day job and a voodoo doll. So... Tomorrow, tomorrow is a chance for the Cowboys to redeem themselves and to get themselves back on a great footing to get ready for the playoffs. And I'm hoping that we can do what we've been doing at home. We can get ourselves together and maybe just maybe we get some luck from some other teams. Let's listen to Rich Eisen this morning. Before we get well, out of just here. just as good as Monday Night Football, a very special edition of Monday Night Football on Saturday night. Lions at Cowboys. The Cowboys head into this game coming off two straight road defeats, and they face a Lions team that's locked up their division. But Dallas is undefeated at home. Here's Dak Prescott on rising to the challenge. You've got to do more, and that's why I said it's looking yourself in the mirror and being accountable. And I don't mean that from the coach's standpoint, from, from the players individually and using your time uh, to make sure that you're investing in, into this game, into this team, into the, the goal that, that we collectively have. I feel like last game we still have put out, you know, great film. Um, and as a team overall, we know what we had as far as mishaps. Um, we can correct those. Coming up in this last two game stretch before the piece, um, we got to be the best version of us. Really just, uh, we just got in the game and in the half a little better. Um, and I don't really think we gave it too many big plays and Things like that, it's just, you know, it just comes down to little things. It's going to be a great matchup. I'm always looking for a top matchup. It's always fun. It's always more challenging. Um, but good on good, you always get better from it. Always get better from it. We now bring in NFL analyst Damian Woody. Mm -hmm. Damian, the Cowboys are 7-0 at home, but that run defense has been a problem for a while. Uh, they're third uh, in the league in rushing yards for the Detroit side. They love to run the ball. So, Damien, what's your concern level for this Cowboys defense against the Lions offense? Yeah, it's pretty significant because we know that we've seen what we've seen this uh, this before, whether it's the Buffalo Bills, the San Francisco 49ers, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. We've seen the this Dallas Cowboys defense be exposed in the running game. And we know once you once you get to the post postseason, your defense is supposed to travel. And the one number one thing you have to do is you have to stop the run. And so for me, I'm, this is the matchup I'm looking forward to the most in this um, in this game between the Cowboys and the Lions to see if this Dallas Cowboys defense can shut down this Lions attack that is really formidable. Damian, stand by. We've got new sound into Sports Center. We have Lions head coach Dan Campbell talking about the challenge that the Cowboys present. There's gonna be nothing easy about going into Dallas, um, you know, uh, to play these guys. Um, you know, and so there, there'll be ebbs and flows of the game. It, it'll be this will be another one that's going to come down to the end of the game. It'll come down to the wire. Um, but as long as we're uh, emotionally, psychologically ready, which I believe we will be, we'll, ha we'll have a good chance. We're in December. Everybody's playing pretty good football now, especially, uh, you know, this team we're getting ready to play. So uh, we, we just got to play clean football, be ready to go. All right, back with Damian Woody now. We hit on Dallas's defense, but Detroit – has allowed the 10th most passing yards on the season while the Cowboys are fifth in the NFL in passing yards. So how can this Lions defense slow down the Cowboys passing game and give themselves a real shot of an upset here? Yeah, it's going to start with the pass rush, right? And that's one that's one, been one of Achilles heels for the uh, Detroit Lions 
uh, defensive front is they haven't gotten enough pressure on the quarterback. So whether it be, you know, Aiden Hutchinson and some of the defensive players on that on that defensive line stepping up or or blitzing, getting after the quarter, bringing extra people, whether it be from the linebacker position or or the secondary, they need to get heat on Dak Prescott because if they don't get the pre- the type of pressure that that they need to, Dak Prescott will sit back there and slice and dice up that Detroit Lions secondary. Cowboys yeah, are seven and zero at home. We'll see if they can make it eight and zero Saturday night. Damian, thank you. It's time for my top five, folks. I may be out of office. You may be wherever you are with your family, or maybe you're still in office. Wherever we are, we're still all in the same boat because Mm -hmm. we are fascinated about what is coming in week 17 of the National Football League. I have my top five games, as I always do each and every week, that I'm most intrigued by. Here it is, my top five list of the most intriguing games of week number 17. High five. Let's listen in on this one. Top five. Top five. Okay, here we go. Number five on this list is the NFC South battle in Tampa Bay. The Saints at the Bucks. Now, if I told Bucks fans, if I told you folks out there that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be going into Week 17 with a win and clinch the division scenario, you decide. That's unbelievable. Well, guess what? It is that actual scenario Baker that has presented itself for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers making a nice December run with Baker Mayfield playing at the top of his Baker Mayfield game, finding Mike Evans, finding uh, Chris Godwin. Rashad White has grown into a grown-ass man of a running back. The defense still doing its thing. Tampa Bay with a win over the New Orleans Saints would clinch the NFC South. And obviously, this is must-win territory for the New Orleans Saints to win this game, get some help. Obviously, the Atlanta Falcons, who are in Chicago, will be looking at the scoreboard the entire time to see what's going down in Tampa, Florida. Number five on my most intriguing games list is, in fact, the New Orleans Saints against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number four on this list, I can't believe what I saw in Arrowhead last week. Mm -hmm. When the NFL schedule and makers came up with this game in week 17, they were envisioning yet another AFC Championship game rematch slash preview potentially for the upcoming AFC Championship game. Bengals and the Chiefs. No Joe Burrow. It's going to be Jake Browning versus Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and the rest of this offense that, as Andy Reid said, they're off just a tick. They've been off more than just a single tick. So the Chiefs need to win this game. For many reasons. Number one, if they win it, they clinch the AFC West and all this craziness that you were hearing towards the end of the Raiders and the Chiefs game and throughout, actually, from Jim Nance and Tony Romo, that the Raiders could actually still win this division if they win out and the Chiefs lose out. That could end right here, right now, with the Chiefs winning this game in Arrowhead, catching the football when thrown to it, getting Patrick Mahomes upright, despite being rushed around the edges these tackles on the offensive line have got a bow up and the defense obviously has to keep playing at championship quality level and then obviously the Bengals need this to stay alive and have a remote shot at a wild card race Bengals Chiefs number four on this list number three on the list the Seattle Seahawks versus the Pittsburgh Steelers I understand that both of these teams Mm -hmm. don't really have a lot of folks believing in their chances (laughs) to make the playoffs and yet go deep into the playoffs but guess what the seattle seahawks with back-to-back wins are currently the seventh seed all they have to do is keep winning and they're in the playoffs and the rams are right in front of them and if the rams and the seahawks wind up being tied at the very end the seahawks are out because they got swept by the los angeles rams so the seahawks need to win this game there are Mm -hmm. no clinching scenarios for them this week there is for the rams If the Seahawks lose and the Rams win in New York, then the Rams clinch a playoff spot. So the Seahawks want to do their part to keep everything alive, certainly with the Rams in San Francisco next week. And we all understand what's at stake for the Pittsburgh Steelers. After that three-game losing streak, they come up with that big win with Mason Rudolph at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. Can Mason Rudolph continue to guide the Steelers' sleigh and keep things going to keep their chances of making the playoffs alive number two on this list lions cowboys here we go it's a saturday game yep whole country's going to be watching the lions just clinched the nfc north the cowboys have lost two in a row they are vulnerable and the lions would love to put a calling card down saying if we see you in the playoffs and we 
already won in this building and we come back here, they would love to do this. You know this is a team that wants the one seed or even the two seed to keep things at home in Detroit mm -hmm. for them where they love to play. Let's be honest. The Cowboys need to win this game to have any shot at the NFC East, one would think. And that one seed, as we all know, is still out there, but it gets worse and worse each and every week for them that they lose. And the Lions, if anybody believes that they've already clinched the NFC North and that they may not have anything else to play for in their own minds, don't forget, this is a team that knocked out the Packers last year after they were eliminated. Every single time they go out there, they play for themselves. They play for their coach. I can't mm -hmm. wait for this game. Number one is obviously Dolphins and Ravens. If the Ravens win it, they clinch the one seed. If the Dolphins win it, they are not only in the running for the one seed with a leg up on the Ravens because they have, uh, if they win this game in Baltimore, a tie break. But if the Dolphins win this, they win the AFC East, making this is a moot point with the Bills coming in the following week. If the Dolphins lose this football game and the Bills beat the New England Patriots, that means week 18 in Miami is for the AFC East and a home playoff game. And the loser has got to go on the road mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Dolphins don't want that. They want to go into Baltimore and say that was not at all an outlier against the Dallas Cowboys. We can go into Baltimore, the best team in the NFL, as we saw on Christmas night, and beat them too and continue moving forward on an upward trajectory to go home and beat the Bills. This is a big game there. Meanwhile, the Baltimore Ravens would love to follow up that huge win in San Francisco by not only beating San Francisco, but beating Miami and taking care of the, their business being the number one seed going into their final week, perhaps they can mm -hmm. start resting some players and go for it. This is a monster game, and that's why it's number one on my most intriguing games for Week 17 list. Have a great Week 17. There you go. Most intriguing games. That's interesting. For me, it's it's no-brainer. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys. <clears throat> That's the most intriguing game. And I will say, actually, the Philadelphia Eagles. Because the Eagles, you know, they got a win against the Giants that wasn't ugly. Now going against one of their former coordinators against uh, the Cardinals. <clears throat> they are not a right they are not a right organization right now. They've got a lot of problems. And uh, we'll see if they right the ship. All right, good people. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we'll be getting ready for the game tomorrow and uh, doing some stuff here at the Red Brick House. I appreciate you guys, as always.